This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Welcome back to The Watch Guys, and this week we have my first ever luxury watch. That's right, the one that started it all. This is Genesis. This week's watch is the Rolex Submariner 16610 LV a.k.a. The Kermit. That's right folks, get strapped in and ready for one of the true watch icons. It was made from 2003 until 2010. It's got the 3135 movement in it, it's a self-winding watch and it's 40 millimeters in oyster steel. Now it's no exaggeration to say that this is one of the true stars in my collection. Partly because it was the first one I ever got, but also it was the first one that increased in value to such an extent that it made me realise that watches don't just lose money. And once those barriers had come crashing down, there was no stopping me in terms of watch purchases. So this, this is the guilty party. This is why I've got such a big watch collection. Now for those of you that are unsure how to pronounce it, this is a Rolex Submariner, not a Rolex Submariner. A submarine is a vessel that goes under the water, a Submariner is a person that goes in a submarine. There's a big difference and even well-respected watch channels seem to call these Submariners. Stop it, it's wrong. Now before we get fully into this week's episode, it's time for a wristwatch check and under the blue jumper this week, I've got another green Submariner. That's right, it's the modern day equivalent. This is the Rolex Hulk, reference number 116610LV. So it's just got an extra one in it. This is a 2018 edition of the Hulk. It's a 40 millimeter Submariner, but the most important thing about this watch right now is it's just been discontinued. So prices of these have rocketed. It's characterized, of course, by the fact that it has a green ceramic bezel and a green dial. So it's about as green and therefore about as Rolex as you can possibly get. Before we crack on with the buying story and the unboxing and why I love this watch so much, let me tell you a little bit about the history of the Submariner. The Submariner was created in 1953 and it was the brainchild of Rolex's Director of Development of New Models, René Paul Genevet. The guy was a complete dude. He came up with many of the iconic marketing campaigns for Rolex. He was a close personal friend of Hans Wildorf, the founder. He also created the Cellini line and many of Rolex's most historic models. And most importantly, he was the architect of the phenomena that we know today of buying many different Rolexes. He was the guy that started all of that off because he realized that rather than have maybe one or two Rolexes in your life, you Rolexes should have different functions and therefore there should be no end to the number of Rolexes that you should own. And of course, I have embraced Genere's philosophy wholeheartedly. Genere was a keen diver, but he was also best mates with a fellow that you might have heard of, Jacques Cousteau, the famous scuba and skin diver who made diving super popular in the 50s. Diving suddenly became uber cool and it was heartily embraced by upwardly mobile men. Many companies targeted diving as a cool sport. It was Genere's friendship with Cousteau that led to discussions about a tool watch for diving called the Submariner. Something accurate, something that could cope with depth without compromising the integrity of the case, and many believe that Cousteau tested those early prototypes. In 1954, the Submariner was officially launched at the Basel Watch Fair. It was water resistant to 100 meters, and it had a 38 millimeter oyster steel case to prevent water ingress at depth. And crucially, it had a new innovation, which was the rotating bezel. It could only rotate one way to prevent mistakes underwater, but the purpose of the bezel was to help divers set the time they had remaining for oxygen. So it was an incredibly useful, life-saving feature. And of course, since the launch of the Submariner, it has been the stalwart of Rolex's line and one of its most iconic and enduring models. But we're here now to talk about this, the 16610 LV. The LV stands for Lunette Verte, which is of course, green bezel. This was launched in 2003, and it was the 50th anniversary of the Submariner. That's why this is such a special watch. It's an anniversary edition. 
and there's a very special buying story which I'll touch on later on in this episode and which I also talked about in my watch collection episode right back at the start of the channel. At the time in the Rolex range this was pretty much the only splash of colour that there was but it's fair to say that actually it wasn't much loved. Not many people wanted it, not many people thought that this was a true worthy anniversary model. Unbelievable to think now but this was sat in authorised dealers and people just didn't pick them up. Now one of the interesting things about this watch is that it has a different core dial to the Submariners of the time. It features what's known as a maxi dial so the hour markers are much larger on the dial itself and that's one of the ways that you can tell. Even if you swap out the bezel as I did you can still tell of course now all the modern Submariners look like that because it was something that was then later brought out. So if I compare it to say a 2019 Submariner you can see there the similarities in terms of the maxi dial. Now this watch has got 18 karat hour markers and also a 48 hour power reserve. Now the Kermit lasted seven years which isn't a great amount of time that's part of the reason why people want them so much. There's not a huge number out there but in that time there were a large number of variations. You got the first generation flat or fat four bezels, you then have the second generation with the standard pointy four on the bezel and a smooth inner case and then you've got the third generation which is a pointy four on the bezel but then engraved on the inside and that's the one that I've got here. This is a 2008 model. There are believed to be five different colour variations of the green bezel itself if you can believe it and also five different dial variations as well to do with the lettering and the spacing. So there was me thinking that there was only a few variations but actually it really does mount up and some of them make collectors go particularly crazy. I'm on pretty safe ground if I say that the very original early serial number fat flat four versions the series ones are by far the most valuable and have appreciated the most but to be honest all variations of the Kermit have seriously gone up in value. So now let me tell you about the buying story for this watch. It's actually quite a complicated story. I bought this brand new in 2008. There you go you can see the receipt right there that's me and this was a present to myself. I really wanted to get a watch that I wanted to keep forever. At the time this was going to be my only watch, it was my main watch, I was going to wear it every single day but I wanted it to be something special and I always loved the look and the proportions of the classic black bezel black dial Submariner and that's what I wanted to buy. When I got to the authorised dealer in Bournemouth they didn't have any standard black bezel black dial Submariners so they pulled out this and to be honest I was a little bit disappointed because I didn't really want this green bezel on it. I wasn't really a big fan of green so unbelievably I was a bit gutted when they pulled it out. However I did buy it there and then under the specific proviso that they lever off the bezel and replace it with a black one which they duly did and I wore it for about nine years not really knowing at all what I had on my wrist and how special it would become. When it was only a chance visit to London and the Burlington Arcade that I suddenly found out that this watch that I had bought for £2,800 in 2008 was suddenly worth £12,000 to £15,000. That just blew my mind. But then there was another twist in the tale because my favourite watch that I'd owned for all those years and was very personal to me was stolen at a spa on my birthday. And someone out there has my watch on their wrist and they have no idea that it's stolen. Hopefully though at some point that person will service the watch. Hopefully that dealer and Rolex will tie together that it was nicked and maybe I'll get it back. Maybe. But I'm not holding my breath. But I do still have the original bezel and box and papers ready for that momentous day. So now it's time to go into Unboxo Vision. Let's have a look at this Rolex Kermit shall we? pretty familiar Rolex box. You can see this one looks a little bit green, uh, current ones are a lot more yellow and you can see it's a little bit bashed up. Inside the open flap we've got the familiar quilted effect green Rolex box, standard size. I should point out I think there's three different box variations for this watch over its lifetime. This is the original purchase receipt. 3280 full price 2,800 actually paid because I had a part exchange but uh, you can see there bought from an authorised dealer on the 12th of April my brother's birthday 2008. Inside underneath this little veil 
There's the watch itself looking resplendent. You can see this is a later on watch because it's got the red tag with it, but you can see also there the original sales tags. Okay, in the flap you can see there, there's the registration card sat in the green wallet. You've got a, a you've got like a calendar schedule there and also the service manual uh, for the watch itself. There's the Rolex Oyster mini brochure, which talks to you a little bit about the history and about the achievements. And we've also got, there you go, the full manual for the Rolex Submariner. You can see here it's one of the classic looking manuals. It's got lots of the different models at the time detailed in there, which looks really cool. And obviously it's got this lovely hand painted piece of artwork on the front, right back to the time of Jacques Cousteau. And there it is. There is the watch itself. Absolutely fantastic. Completely perfect condition because of course this isn't the one that I wore for nine years. So this one is in far better condition. Whoever's got my watch will have a slightly banged up version. So why is this watch so interesting to me? What I particularly like about it is it really feels like a piece of Rolex history. It's an important model. It's one that should be in every Rolex collector's collection. It's a very simple watch. It's very wearable. The only thing you've got to watch out for is that that beautiful green bezel can get easily marked and scratched. So you've got to take a bit of care of it. I think one of the things I find so alluring is that beautiful green, the combination of the green and the black dial, and also the proportions of this watch. It is absolutely perfect and it's also supremely comfortable. I just think it is one of those all-time greats. It gets nods of respect from other watch users. It's always appreciated. It always looks good on the wrist. I just think it's probably one of Rolex's most perfect watches ever created and I will never get rid of this one. Now currently values of Rolex Kermits tend to be anywhere between 11 and 25 thousand pounds for a pristine fat or flat four. No one seems to have a full consensus on that, by the way. I used to call it the fat four for ages, but then I also heard people calling it the flat four. Uh, it doesn't seem like anyone's right particularly. It's either the fat four, which works when you look at it, or the flat four, which works as well. Either way, what you are getting is one of Rolex's most beautiful, most usable tool watches. And if there's a Rolex you were always promising yourself, I would say, get one of these. So there we are, folks. This is the Rolex 16610 LV, AKA the Kermit. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you're enjoying what I'm doing here at The Watch Guys. If you do, please click that subscribe button. Remember, it's free. And also, please feel free to leave comments and like the videos as well. It gives me a big boost while I'm making them. Hopefully you enjoyed all the information I provided about this incredible model and there will be another episode of The Watch Guys next week.